There are growing calls for another language to be added to South Africa's national anthem. Nama language activists are lobbying for the ancient indigenous language to form part of Ngosisigeleli Africa. They already translated the anthem and sing it at cultural events. The national anthem currently features five languages. It's Xhosa, Sizulu, Sesotho, Afrikaans and English. Nama in South Africa has been on the brink of extinction for decades. But there are efforts efforts to revive it. Two schools are currently offering Nama as extracurricular subjects, while efforts are on the way to get it as a part of the normal curriculum. It's hoped efforts like uh, getting it to be part of the national anthem will help speed up that process. All right, let's speak now to Julius Dantile, who is the executive head of languages at the Pan-South African Languages Board, PANSOLB. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So let's just start first with looking at um, our national anthem, Gosisigeleli Africa. It's the official anthem, um, firstly, of the African National Congress, while the STEM, uh, from South Africa, the core force of South Africa was the country's national anthem during apartheid. So is it a feeling that almost 30 years on it really should reflect other political hues and cultural sentiments? Um, my, my next question, my name to your viewers. Um, I think the call is um, all about representation. Mm. Um, and not just symbolic representation, but um, what can be referred is that people are now starting to demand uh, uh, being a uh, part of a, 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 a broader South African public life and political life. I think um, it, is, it is a call for some of these particular kinds of reconsiderations. Um, however, there are protocols and constitutional processes that have to be followed in order to do um, such um, uh, processes. Um, and those are articulated um, through parliamentary processes and parliamentary, parliamentary engagements. So um, a call may come from the community, but it has to be attended to um, by the powers that be and, and the institutions that are um, meant to deal with such um, uh, processes. As you say, representivity, no, it's pan sub, you're not necessarily political, but looking back at Nkosi Segelele, it was composed by Dete Inok Sontonga, a Methodist school teacher. It was originally sung as a church hymn, but later became an act of political defiance against the apartheid government. And many people are saying, if you look at South Africa now, it's not living up to that dream of a freedom, of a democratic transition. If now we are not reflecting that representativity that you speak of, and perhaps a political movement is then needed to ensure that it does. Your thought on that? Um, my thought is um, that um, it was developed um, in a particular context, uh, for a particular purpose at the time, and it served that purpose. And I think um, it is only part of um, Kosovo's freedom, that is part of um, South Africa's um, national anthem. But if you go to other African countries, and that sings that particular um, um, song, they have taken it in full and then adopted um, it into their own um, um, circumstances. But it is a call um, for all Africans in Africa to um, really. Um, 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 uh, ask for blessing from God. Now, um, as you have said that um, some of the comments are, are kind of politically orientated, and as the Pan South African Language Board, we 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 are not immune to um, a political environment because we, we we work in a political environment. It's something that we cannot run away, but we cannot take a stance. As I say that. Um, the, the, our approach would be then to advise where we can um, that um, if people want to express such feelings and, and such desires, they should go through to um, um, a particular institutions like the Department of um, Sport, Art and Culture. That has got um, the protocols of how um, to deal with the national anthem. Um, remember the national anthem, it is translated in, into some of other languages, 
but it is not sung in those particular languages. That is the protocol. Um, so it is sung in the nature that it has been um, designed and written in, in, the, in the different languages that um, it has been written in. So mm. um, the translations of, of, of that anthem are all about just providing an understanding and comprehension um, amongst the populace um, of, of South Africa so that they can understand what they are singing, especially uh, in areas where those people don't speak those particular languages. Mm -hmm. So, as I, I want to, Before we go to the issue of how many languages are involved, because it is an important one, it brings us to uh, present day, what we're discussing, but I want to take it back to the issue of context, which you uh, mentioned earlier on, because that is important. It does draw a fuller picture. It, it gives a greater sense of empathy or uh, resonance with people of how we came to be where we are. And I mean, it's timeless now to look at, for instance, the STEM was a co-national anthem with God Save the King, the Queen from 1936 to 1957, when it became the sole national anthem until 1994. And it's at a time now where we're looking at the impact of colonialism, particularly um, the leader of the Commonwealth, which is the UK, the Queen at the time. So what we're saying is that there needs to be evolution that reflects uh, where we are. So what should it reflect now? And, and we'll talk about the, the linguistics part of it and why that's an important. So when we choose a national anthem and we're saying uh, present day South Africa in its transition, this should be what should be in that uh, anthem. Um, from, from the large perspective, um, we may say that it should be um, inclusive um, as much as possible. Um, and that is what is, is aspired uh, by the Constitution. But then from the practical point of view, then it becomes uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to um, um, uh, bring um, all the languages that are spoken in the country. Um, we've got at the moment um, um, 11 official languages with um, uh, non-official languages that um, and encounters um, that are originally from the country. Um, therefore, it, it's all about issues of practicality. How then do you bring that practicality into the space? It is um, for Pensat, it is not to say whether the language um, or other languages can be added. But at the same time, the mm. question that um, has to be answered by those who design um, 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 uh, the national anthem or who can engage in the redesign of it, it would be the each of the okay. practicality. Um, would then be, uh, would be uh, 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 still um, singing the national anthem as is, but in different languages. Mr. Those are the questions Thank that have been South African languages. We cannot directly answer to them. But looking at the practicality and providing advice, um, we may be able to do that at the okay. later stage. We are running out of time and I need to ask you this. We mentioned uh, the lyrics of the current anthem employs five of the most populous of South Africans' 11 official languages. So uh, we were speaking about the Nama wanting uh, to be included in the national anthem. The process of elimination, how do we decide which language deserves to be in it? And also when you talk about uh, the design of the anthem itself, it's uh, said to be a neo-modal national anthem, the only neo-modal national anthem in the world, meaning that it starts in one key and finishes in another. The importance of all of these components. Um, the, the best place to see uh, people are in the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, um, in the section um, hereditary, um, where then they can articulate those particular aspects. Um, in terms of the languages that um, um, are represented um, in the language, in, in the national anthem at the moment, I believe that um, they are they were striving for representation and representativity with across um, 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 the, 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 the bigger languages um, that are spoken in the country. Um, again, the question is going to be, say, are you excluding minorities um, that exist in the country? And I think that is a debate that the country has to look at. How do you bring them as uh, the part of um, the broader um, spectrum of um, 
the um, uh, 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 these representations um, in a multilingual country like South Africa. Even if you speak about Nama uh, today, um, another Koyan Sen language is going to come through because there are a number of them that um, 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 are facing extinction. Um, some of them are already extinct. Um, so probably the, uh, once you start to consider Nama, the Nukuriki um, will then come, um, Kun is going to come into the space, Kagam and other languages may then be required, like uh, saying that we also want to be represented um, into that space. All so right, it Mr. is Dengale. a conversation of itself, yes. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but we do thank you for your time. Julius Dandile is uh, executive head of languages at the Pan-South African Languages Board. We're going to leave it there.